here we have a function f, which takes an input, multiplies it by 2, then adds 3 to get an output. Or f of x equals 2x plus 3. When we're looking for an inverse function, we're looking for the function that does the opposite to this function. So let's look at a few inputs. If we started with 2 and multiplied it by 2, we'd get 4. Then added 3, we'd get 7. If we put 5 into the function, we'd multiply it by 2 to get 10. Add 3 to get 13. So this is function f. The inverse of function f will do the opposite thing. So it will start with 7 and go back to 2. It will start with 13 and go back to 5. So it will start with the output and go back to the input. So what would we have to do to go from the output back to the input? We would have to go backwards. So the opposite of adding 3 is taking away 3. So we could take away 3. And then the opposite of timesing by 2 is dividing by 2. So if we take away 3 and then divide by 2, we would go back from the output to the input. So 7 minus 3 is 4. Divide by 2 is 2. 13 minus 3 is 10. Divided by 2 is 5. So this is the function that undoes function f. And we call it the inverse function. We write f with a minus 1. So f inverse of x. f inverse of x is x minus 3 over 2. We can also find the inverse function algebraically by changing the subject of the formula. So if we started with f of x equals 2x plus 3, and we rewrite it as y equals 2x plus 3. So x is the input and y is the output. In an inverse function, the outputs become the inputs and the inputs become the outputs. So we can flip x and y around and write x equals 2y plus 3. And to find the inverse function, we need to change the subject of the formula to get y by itself. So we'll take 3 away from both sides. So subtract 3 from both sides. So x minus 3 equals 2y. And then divide both sides by 2. So y is x minus 3 over 2. And we write that again as an f minus 1x, f inverse of x is x minus 3 over 2. Let's have a look at an example of this. So we've got f of x equals 3x minus 1. And we want to find f inverse of x, the inverse function, the function that does the opposite thing to f. So at the moment, we can say y equals 3x minus 1. And for the inverse function, the input becomes the output and the output becomes the input. Or x becomes y and y becomes x. So we can flip the x and y around, switch them around. And then we're going to make y the subject of the formula. So plus 1 to both sides. So x plus 1 is 3y. And then divide both sides by 3. So x plus 1 over 3 is y. So x plus 1 over 3 is our inverse function. So we can write f inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 3. Question 2 says find the value of f inverse of 5. So we need to put 5 into our inverse formula and see what get we get out. So f inverse of 5 is 5 plus 1 over 3. 5 plus 1 is 6 and 6 over 3 is 2. So if we put 5 into our inverse function, 
we get two out. So that means if we put two into our original function, we would get five out because the inputs and the outputs are switched around. Okay, one for you to try. So give this one a go. We've got f of x equals 5x plus 8. Find the inverse function. So at the moment, y equals 5x plus 8. In the inverse function, the x's are going to become the y's and the y's become the x's. So to make y the subject of the formula, let's subtract 8 from both sides. And then divide both sides by 5. So our inverse function, f inverse of x, is x minus 8 over 5. Find the value of f inverse of negative 2. So we change x to negative 2 in our inverse function. So that would be negative 2 minus 8 over 5, which is negative 10 over 5, which is negative 2. So if we put negative 2 into our inverse function, we get out negative 2, which means if we put negative 2 into our original function, we would get out negative 2 as well. And another example, we've got f of x equals x over 4 plus 3. Again, find the inverse function. So at the moment, we can say y equals x over 4 plus 3. 3 and in the inverse function we'll switch x and y around x will become y and y will become x the input becomes the output and the output becomes the input and then we'll make y the subject of the formula so we'll subtract 3 from both sides take 3 away from both sides so x minus 3 equals y over 4 and then to get y by itself Multiply both sides by 4. So 4 times x minus 3 is y. So the inverse function, f inverse of x, is 4 times x minus 3. We could expand the bracket. We don't have to. We can leave it there. Question 2. Solve f of x equals f inverse of x. So f of x is x over 4 plus 3. And f inverse of x is 4 times x minus 3. So let's solve this. We can start by, well, we'll start by expanding the bracket that we didn't expand before. So x over 4 plus 3 equals 4 times x is 4x. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So we've got a fraction. We've got to divide by 4. We've got x over 4 here. We can get rid of it by multiplying every term by 4. So I'll do that now. So you multiply every term by 4. So 3 4 is a 12. 4x times 4 will be 16x. And negative 12 times 4 would be negative 48. So now I'm going to take my smallest x away, which is 1x. So take 1x away from both sides. So 12 equals 15x minus 48. I'm going to plus 48 to both sides, which should give me 60 equals 15x. I then divide both sides by 15 to get x by itself, so x is 4. So what does that tell us? So 4 is the value where the input and the output are the same. Okay, 2 for you to try here, so give them a go. The first one, we've got f of x equals 2 times 3x plus 1. And we're going to find the inverse function. So we're going to rewrite it as y equals 2 times 3x plus 1. And for the inverse function, 
the x and the y are going to flip around. They're going to switch around. So x equals 2 times 3y plus 1. So now we want to make y the subject of the formula. I'm going to expand this bracket first. So 2 times 3y is 6y. 2 1 to 2. Now I subtract. Now I'm going to take away 2 from both sides. So x minus 2 is 6y. I then divide both sides by 6. So y is x minus 2 over 6. So our inverse function, f inverse of x, is x minus 2 over 6. For the second one, g inverse of x, so g of x is 9 minus x over 2. So at the moment we can say y is 9 minus x over 2. In the inverse function, x becomes y and y becomes x. The input becomes the output and the output becomes the input. And we're going to make y the subject. So multiply both sides by 2. 2x equals 9 minus y. If we plus y to both sides, we'll have 2x plus y equals 9. And then subtract 2x from both sides. So y is 9 minus 2x. Or g inverse of x is 9 minus 2x. To finish up, we've got some questions here. Pause the video and give them a go. The first one, f of x equals x over 3 minus 1. Find f inverse of x. Find the inverse function. So what's the opposite function to this? So at the moment, y equals x over 3 minus 1. I'm going to switch x and y around for the inverse function. I then make y the subject, so plus 1 to both sides. x plus 1 equals y over 3. I then multiply both sides by 3. So 3 times x plus 1. I'm going to write that as 3x plus 3. So y equals 3x plus 3. So the inverse function, f inverse of x is 3x plus 3. Question 2, find the value of f inverse of negative 2. So we're changing x to negative 2 in our inverse function. So that will be 3 times negative 2 plus 3. So that would be negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3. So for our inverse function, if we put in negative 2, we get out negative 3, which means for our original function, if we put in negative 3, we would get out negative 2. And question 2, we've got g of x equals 7 plus 2x all over 5. And we want to find the inverse function. So again, we'll rewrite it as y equals. So y equals 7 plus 2x over 5. We're going to switch the x and y around for our inverse function. And then we're going to make y the subject. So multiply both sides by 5. 5x equals 7 plus 2y. Take 7 away from both sides, 5x minus 7 equals 2y, and divide both sides by 2, so 5x minus 7 over 2. So that's our inverse function, and we can write that g inverse of x equals 5x minus 7 over 2. Find the value of g inverse of negative 2. So we're putting negative 2 into our inverse function. 
So changing x into negative 2. So that's 5 times negative 2 minus 7 over 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So negative 10 minus 7 over 2, which is negative 17 over 2, which we can leave like that or change it to negative 8.5. So if we put negative 2 into our inverse function, we get out negative 17 over 2, which means if we put negative 17 over 2 into our original function, we would get out negative 2.